Um, okay, so to, to kind of put into words what I was saying here, just to be clear, um, this, this formula again was derived for the energies that could be given off by hydrogen. But what Bohr was, was more getting at is if hydrogen is giving off these exact energies, it must be the case that these are the allowed energies of hydrogen. That if it has some change in energy delta E, this delta E is exactly what it's going to gain or lose. And so really what we think is the delta E going from I to F. So physically speaking, the hydrogen atom has what are known as energy levels that are mapped to the integers. Or when I say that, what I mean is that you can list in series a whole bunch of different energies of the hydrogen atom and associate with each of those a specific integer greater than zero. Um, how do I say it? Mapped to or corresponding. So the lowest one that we can go is one. If the hydrogen atom loses some energy, so it goes from one particular energy level to a, low, uh, to a lower energy level. So n equals five to n equals two. We can predict exactly how much energy it will give off by exactly this formula. We put in ni equals five, we put in nf equals two. So I'm gonna say it's allowed to transition. from any n i to n f, where it's understood that in this case here that n i is greater than n f, and the energy it gives off, or the energy difference, is given by this. That formula right there. That looks somewhat bad. And th that itself is the groundbreaking revolution. That it, it is only allowed to have certain energies and by transitioning those energies, it can give off discrete predictable amounts of energy. But for some crazy reason, you can't just arbitrarily start here at some energy amount and give off some arbitrary amount of energy. Everything is predicted based specifically on the set of integers. And like I said, that's the, the cornerstone of quantum physics, that everything corresponds to series starting with one, two, three, four. And it's like no numbers exist between those ones and twos and threes and fours. No energies exist between these values here. And we can go even further. If the energy difference, or, or when I say the energy difference, if the energies that, if the values of energy that can lose correspond with this formula here, then we can actually not, well, well uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so, so given these two statements here, if we have very specific energy levels corresponding to each integer, and if the amounts of energy that we lose are given by exactly this formula, I do want to now change this to say delta E. Because that's really what it is. It's a change in energy of the atom. And if it loses X amount of energy, it gives off exactly that amount. So it starts at some initial energy level, it loses that, it goes to the next one. So we can associate the loss of energy in going from I to F as having two separate energies. And by the way, this actually should be, I should write it like this. Um, and the reason why that's, no, just, <laughs> other way here. Okay, so, so the, the reason why I've reversed that is that 
if the hydrogen atom loses some amount of energy, it's going to end up at a lower energy level than that. So the right hand side does need to be neg negative. Am I am I saying that right? Yeah, whatever. Okay, it makes sense. So, um, and if that's true, here's the punchline. So, E I, we can write directly as this. H C R naught times one over N I squared. E F equals H C R, so that's supposed to be R naught there, R naught times one over N F squared. Or arbitrarily speaking, you can just write any energy level as E sub N equals H C R naught over N squared. And again, that's specifically for N greater than or equal to one. And this is the, the, the Bohr formula. These are the specific energy levels of the hydrogen atom. It corresponds with integer multiples. So the only energies that it, it is allowed to have are the solutions to this equation for which N is an integer. It is not allowed to have arbitrary amounts of energy. The only energies that it's allowed to have are precisely mapped to the integers and nothing in between. This is quantum, quantum mechanics at its, at its most fundamental. That God or whomever said that, hey, hydrogen atom, you can't just arbitrarily choose an energy. You have to choose it based specifically on the integers. If you choose something in between that, you're not allowed to have that energy. So that's, where, that's why this formula is uh, strictly quantum in nature. It, is not, it does not uh, take a continuous spectrum. It takes a discontinuous quantum, quantized spectrum, I should say. 